Well, it's from one sheikh to another. He is none other than Dr. Abu Ibrahim. He's going to be sharing some of his Ramadan wisdom with us as well. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ramadan Mubarak. And to you, Ramadan Mubarak. Day six, subhanallah. Subhan. It's like flying by. It is, subhanallah. As an imam, we stand on the mimba before Ramadan and we're always making dua. Allah ma balligna Ramadan or Allah bring forth for us Ramadan. Mm. But whilst we're in the month of Ramadan, we don't realize how quickly it goes. Yes. Because I know beforehand we were just eager, the months and the days we're counting, uh, even in the minutes. Yes. So now we're in the month of Ramadan, we really want to seize the moment. Mm -hmm. So we say, Allah mabarak lana fi Ramadan, or Allah give us the blessings of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. So as the days go quick, you need to make the intention, you need to make your plan, you need to put it into place. And I think that's one of the things that we need to invest in. in the, yeah. Because Ramadan is an excellent opportunity. It's unlike mm -hmm. any other month. It is. It is very special amongst the months mm -hmm. of Allah Azza wa Jal. Yeah. Now, quite a lot of times people say, well, how, what makes it more special than, say, for example, the month of Hajj mm -hmm. or even Muharram? Now, when it comes to doing good deeds, we need to appreciate that this is the month in which Allah opens up the gates of heavens. Yeah. And then Allah closes the gates of the hellfire. Yeah. So there's two things we need to appreciate. Why is Allah opening up the gates of paradise yeah. and closing the gates of hellfire? And then thirdly, Allah chains up all of the shayateen. Yeah. So the scholars, they talk about this and they say, it becomes easy in this month to seek the mercy of Allah, because that's what paradise is. Yeah. If you were to smell the fragrance of paradise, you will see this is the delight, the bliss, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this month, we find many of us, if we make the right intention, seek the right means to draw close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're going towards his mercy. Yeah, subhanAllah. I mean, like, one of the ways that we can really take advantage of this is that, um, and we don't really talk about it too much, I think anyway, is dua. Of course like how powerful dua is in this time so how can we actually benefit from saying the right duas what dua should we mention and you know what we should have yakin that our dua inshallah will be answered oh definitely i mean dua is the essence of all worship mm. firstly it is worship because quite often we we tend to think it's something supplementary we add mm. on to for example at the end of our of our fasting or at the end of our salah but the prophet sallallahu said a dua hu al ibadah it is actually worship it is the essence of all worship. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It means worshipping Allah is to do things that Allah is pleased with. Do things that Allah commands you to do or you're recommended by the Prophet to do. This is all worship. Mm -hmm. And really, the dua itself is a call. You're asking Allah for something. And even you're asking Allah that, oh Allah, I've done such a deed, accept it. Because we don't know even if our fasting will be accepted. Exactly. So one of the things we do is pick the right moments, use the right supplication, mm -hmm. ask Allah to accept our deeds. But also another form of dua is to praise Allah. So really, half the time we don't realize we're actually making supplication to Allah. Even when we pray salah, when we say Alhamdulillah, Ki Rabbil Alameen, we say Allah, oh praise Allah, the Lord of all of the creation. That is a form of dua. We don't really understand that. Really, you, we are, we're acknowledging Allah. Yeah. Allah is aware we're calling. It's like if somebody was to mention in Sister Aisha, yeah. even if it wasn't actually calling out to you, but if you were to hear your name, be like, oh, somebody called me. So when we say Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, supplication, a connection, you're sending some information. And that is what dua is all about. You want to have that connection with Allah subhanahu wa yeah. ta'ala. So for the people fasting, one of the things that they want to do is at the end of the fast, make sure you say a small dua, maybe like Allahumma laka sumtu. Well, I fasted for you. Yeah. You know, that is you add so much more barakah to a deed that, you know, if you want to do, there'll be slightly less barakah yeah. in it, subhanAllah. Uh, what about people who are so busy, you know, they're working full time or you have mothers who are constantly on the go. How can you incorporate dua on the go, actually? Well, dua is one of those things that quite a lot of time people ask me, you know, do I need to be in a certain condition to make dua? Do I need to have wudu? Do I need to face the qibla? For certain supplication, you need that. But in general, the daily adhkar, as we say, the daily dua, you can do this on the go. And I love this on the go because we live in this sort of society yes. now. Everything's on the go. Yes. Uh, even whilst we're sitting here, I'm checking my email sometimes, checking extra messages, uh, telling my wife I arrived, alhamdulillah. Yes. You know, you're doing all of these things on the go, whereas in the past you couldn't do this thing. Dua is one of the most simplest acts of ibadah you can do because a lot of the times you don't need the purity and you can just say, alhamdulillah, yes. subhanallah. So our mothers, if you're making this tasbih and, you know, and always remembering Allah, you're actually making dua to Allah. And then occasionally you may remember, oh, I need to make a dua for this. Oh, Allah, make this easy for me. Yeah. Oh, Allah, give me this. Oh, Allah, give me patience with my children, yes. my husband, yes. and likewise. Yes. So these are all nida, which is calling upon someone who can actually aid you. Because sometimes when we look to ourselves, 
Now, physically, we think we can cope something, but sometimes mentally we can't. Yeah. And it's just that extra spirituality when you call to Allah, oh, Allah, support me in this. And you find you get that energy. Yes. And especially our sisters are cooking iftar at the moment. May Allah give them strength. Amin, Ya Rabbal Alameen.